Okay, so second thing that I want to cover this week is the mental side of pitching and how it's tough to figure out what's necessarily going on with youth pitchers. So when I say youth pitchers, I mean anywhere between, you know, 10, 8, whatever, where they start all the way up until high school, college, really just amateurs in general. But so mental side is huge because we're not robots. Pitching is not just like, here's your mechanics. Let's learn good mechanics. Therefore, you throw all the strikes you want. You execute pitches, all that stuff. It just doesn't happen quite that easily. And just here's a quick test for you. Number one, does your son or the players or the pitcher in your life, when he throws a bullpen, does he throw more strikes than he does in a game? Like a significant amount more. Every pitcher, if you throw 80% strikes in the bullpen, you'll throw 70% strikes in a game. If nothing changes mentally, just the competition, the higher speed, everything with the hitter in there, just different. You don't throw as many strikes, obviously, as when you're just practicing. Uh, But for pitchers that can consistently throw strikes in the bullpen, if they don't consistently throw strikes or they be kind of rated as kind of inconsistent or they walk a lot of hitters or they don't just throw that many strikes in a game, then there's something different going on. It's nothing physical because bullpen mechanics, game mechanics, they're the same thing. So when there's a big disconnect from the bullpen to the game, it's really just in their head. And uh, it's it's really tough, I think, for outsiders to understand that. So if you didn't pitch or if you didn't pitch at a really high level or you just haven't been in the game long enough or, you know, maybe you played as a kid, but it's been a long, 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 long time, you sort of lose perspective on the fact that there's just a lot going on out there. And if you think yourself through it too much and if you guide yourself through it too much, it gets very difficult to manage the game. So, You know, I've seen tons and tons of pitchers who they throw consistent strikes in the bullpen. They throw very accurately in the bullpen. And then when they go into the game, you can see them guiding them, guiding their body through the delivery and guiding their body is I'm not just I'm not locking on the mitt and I'm just making my pitch and my body does what I've already programmed it to do. It's I need to hit this outside corner spot. So I'm going to go through and then get my front shoulder up and then accelerate the ball and then really pull it right here and that's sort of the way they do it consciously. And I know that because I've done that at many different points in my, in my life. I was that way as a hitter for the most part in high school. I really couldn't pull the ball. I was in like a middle, like a a middle away kind of hitter. And my coach in high school uh, was like proud of me for that. He thought that it was, I was like advanced kind of because I could, I had like an opposite field approach. Whereas most young hitters, they like pulling the ball and whatever. It wasn't that way. I always knew that I just like, I didn't react as well as I sort of like told myself to swing. And that was why I didn't pull the ball. And I knew this, I started to figure it out one day because two of my biggest hits in high school, uh, I remember, well, I guess three of them. A, my first varsity at bat, I hit a home run. This was at a short porch field. It was an opposite field home run. But I remember that home run because A, it was my first varsity at bat and I was nervous. But B, because... I didn't tell myself to swing. I just was like so nervous and amped up and in the moment that I just like saw ball hit ball and I just happened to go (laughs) oppo taco like 320. Like it wasn't very far. It was a very short field. And, uh, but it was cool and it was different because again, I just automatically reacted to the pitch and that's what happened. And these two other hits in my career, they were both pulled balls like to the left side of the gap, balls I just destroyed that it was the same thing. I don't know what happened. I don't know why. Maybe it was just that it was like a big situation and there are runners on and like a hard throwing pitcher or whatever. But I just got in the box and when I saw the ball, my body swung and I just like tanked it. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I should just do that every time. I should just go up there and just not think and just like let my body do it. But it's weird to try to do that because I was so used to my whole life. Like, all right, here's the pitch. Like, swing and obviously it wasn't like that slow because I would just strike out every time if I told myself like swing but basically on a kind of like micro level I was I was seeing the ball and like telling myself to swing where the best hitters don't do that they just they've seen enough pitches and they just know to react the right way when the ball comes in so I handicap I handicap myself as a as a hitter like that I I fully aware of it And there's lots of hitters that do that. There's lots of pitchers that do the same thing. And 
I was always battling that as a, as a pitcher because when you're trying to hit a spot, it's easy to want to control everything and, and like want to really mentally say, I'm going to do these bunch of things to make that ball go to that spot. And when you do that, it actually makes everything worse. It just screws everything up. When you can lock your eyes on the mitt and have such intense focus that you sort of lose track of what everything else is doing. So basically if I'm like, I'm staring through the camera right now to my, my back wall. And if I'm staring that hard, I can't really like see what my body's doing. I like kind of know what it's doing, but I, I allow it to do what it knows how to do rather than I'm, my gaze is a little bit lighter and now I can like think my way through my delivery. So thinking is like this, the worst thing ever for, for sports. It's just terrible. And it's extremely difficult to break yourself out of that. And when I struggled, I struggled a lot throwing a breaking ball for strike. I struggled throwing my breaking ball all the way from college into pro ball. When I first learned it, I had this nasty just hammer curveball that I got taught and I just like threw it and I could throw it for a strike all the time because I was just automatic with it. And it was crazy. It was great. And that got me to college. But at some point, I started to lose feel for it. So I started to try to control it. So I was like, okay, if you catch it here, it'll go for a strike. And then it doesn't. And then it's like, okay, well, then I got to catch it here. And then there you have it. I'm trying to like consciously get my finger into the exact right spot position to get that breaking ball to go where I want it to go. And it just can't work that way because you just can't repeat it that way. Uh, it's just like too many different signals going through your brain, through your body. So I know for a fact that that was why I struggled throwing my, my off speed stuff so much for strikes. And I did take up a med- meditation practice and I did a lot of meditation and visualization and that helped tremendously get me reconnected with my mitt and my focus and get my focus there because my, my focus was so much on executing the pitch, visualizing the pitch, that I was so focused there that my body, like, I wasn't looking at my body anymore. It's kind of like if you had two children, they're both both misbehaving, and you're focused on just one of them, the other one can kind of, like, do its thing and continue to, like, break stuff or whatever. Uh, that was kind of how it was. If I got so focused on the mitt and so focused on visualizing the pitch then I didn't have enough brain power left to like think myself through it. It would just sort of happen. And the couple games when I was really struggling with this, when I like wasn't in it, there was one game where I, I, I threw a one hitter one time and I just miraculously threw my curveball for strikes that game in a season when I threw like zero curveballs for strikes. Like this is my rookie year. Like I threw like zero curveballs for strikes that whole season. I basically threw all fastballs, but one game I had, I threw a one hitter, complete game shutout, 14 strikeouts. And for whatever reason, I threw curveballs for strikes that game. I was just like, so out of my mind, like in this trance, just like getting the ball and throwing it that the curveball went along for the ride. I just like got the curveball and threw it and it was fine. But all the other starts that year, I was like, Oh, I got to get this curveball. So I got to get it here. And then it'll go for a strike. And I just, it never works. Just never, ever works that way. So if your son is out there struggling to throw strikes and his mechanics look mostly as good as all the other pitchers, that's the other thing with youth baseball, amateur baseball, every pitcher that goes out there, there's some that look bad and there's some that look really good, but yet there's not a super strong correlation between which ones throw strikes. You could have the kids with ugly mechanics that have clearly are from smaller towns or whatever. They don't have as good of instruction, perhaps they still throw strikes. Some of them, like how can a kid with bad mechanics who's never been taught throw strikes kid with really good mechanics throws less strikes. It doesn't make sense, but it's because there's this huge middle component missing because we're not pitching machines. We're not robots. And some kids are just natural strike throwers. And when you have really good mechanics and a really good arm and you're a natural strike thrower, which natural strike thrower just means like that weird mind body connection where you're focused on the mid and you know what your body's doing and you don't screw it up by overthinking it, then you're good. Like your path is clear to continue going, as far as you want in baseball. But if you don't have one of those things, like I didn't, I don't know what I did over time. I think just experience and getting more of that fight when it's like fight or flight, when you start to get nervous, like, oh, it's 2-0. Like I got to definitely throw a fastball for a strike. And then you guide it even worse. Uh, but guiding the ball and that side, that aspect of the mental side of pitching is just really tough. I mean, it ba- I think guys like me battle it their whole career. I battled it till age 30. And 
obviously like the expectations and what that looks like at age 28, 29, 30 is very different than when you're a kid. Like I wouldn't go out there and walk five batters, but I wouldn't throw, you know, a two, one curveball, or I, I wouldn't throw it at all. Or I would like never throw a first strike. And it, to the untrained eye, like maybe you don't see any of that stuff as like a real negative. You don't notice the fact that, Oh, he can't throw a He can't throw a curveball when he's behind the count or he can't throw a curveball when he's even in the count. Um, I know that and it affects my performance on the field, but to the untrained eye, like that's not like a big thing. So I'm not walking everybody. I'm not changing the whole flow of the game. It's just like, I can't be, I'm going to hit my competency level where I can't go up another level because I just can't do that. I can't make that pitch, right? You can't pitch in the big leagues without being able to throw a two, two curveball. You just can't, right? So that's, uh, that's my, my spiel. I think for today about the mental side of pitching, just be aware if you're a pitcher and there's a big dif- disconnect between your bullpen command and your game command, there's something up here. And for parents, if you see that same thing or if they go out on the field, um, there's just a mental thing going on. And it's really tough for me to say, oh, like, do this, 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 and this. Yeah. It's just like, isn't that easy? Some kids are really good at uh, just being dumb when they're out there, just getting the ball and like competing. And that's the best thing that you can do is just compete visualize your spot, focus on your spot and compete. When you're focused on competing, you don't think about like, think about, think about football. Do you think tacklers ever think about their form in a tackle when they're in the middle of a, of a play? I think linebackers think about their form of a tackle. No, they're so going and they see the guy and they just, I'm going to hit him and they hit him. That's how pitching needs to be, but there's no really easy, clear way to, to make that happen.